Um, there are two participants in this conference. Please yeah. announce yourself. This is the 523 Happy Hour with your host, Kelly Lincoln, here on NetRootsRadio.com. <laughs> oh. so because this is the third time I am doing this well the third time with the microphone that's working and um, I can hear myself and that's annoying um, so in my previous incarnations on this thing I am now asking my friend my producer if she can hear me anyway um what was I talking about? We're talking about all the stuff that was going on beforehand. Um, just some audio issues here. And um, I don't see anything going through Spreka Studio. So I have no idea if anything's coming through or not. What's going on here? Turn you off. Oh, look, no more echo. Seems to help. <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't even know. I guess I played every. I guess I played the introduction. I don't know. I don't remember. I'm a, it's like the third time's a charm, and um, oh god, the joy of technology. Um, I had initially planned to do this earlier in the evening so I could do a video live stream to uh, YouTube, but o Open Broadcaster Studio (OBS) for short um, decided that, as per usual, it was going to like be all all laggy and everything, and that really really um, helped me out. So. That's that. Um, the uh, uh, this is just really annoying <laughs> for me, not for you. I don't know what's going on. I don't know anymore. Please stop. Um, talking about language abuse and languages and stuff. I think I got it. Um, I really hate it when my when my when my okay. Good. I am broadcasting. Um, when 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 I'm trying to, uh, oh, let me see if I can regain my train, because one of the unquantifiable affects of a brain injury is um, brain exhaustion, brain fatigue. And when I get tired, I get, I, I lose my train of thought much my my train of thought goes off goes off the tracks uh, the rails much quicker and easy and faster than if I'm fresh and awake and I'm drinking um, coffee so I am going to be like awake and I have to go to work at noon today <laughs> anyway um, earlier when trying to get this thing started what was going on here and this is a technical thing is that but it's but it's a software it's a software issue so you all know about software issues. And I'm using this great application at Spreaker Studio, um, and you, Spreaker Studio, and uh, um, it did an update. And then for the first few times I got this thing started, it wasn't my microphone was not functioning properly. So I played around with it, closed it out, stopped it, started it. And so you're getting. I'm not actually now. I'm 15 minutes of into the show. Actually, had I not had all of these issues. Um, <laughs> Such is the life of the solo producer who is talent director, research department, everything all by themselves. They get to do this all by themselves, except for the fact that um, when I record this, I do have a producer, and it's my um, late night morning talk show co host, Ricky, up in, up, in, up in Atlantic time, who tells me, I can't hear you, or I can hear you, yay! You're working, you're functioning, yay, we can hear you. You got so much to say, so much to say, yay. And, um, <laughs> oh, weasel words. And uh, we were talking actually about 
you know, language abuse and use and, and how, what an what a, a adept uh, thwimp is with um, preemptive framing. And, but he's also very whiny. Uh, so we know he's not a Scientologist because he's very reactive. And we all know that Scientologists, um, their main goal is to conquer that reactive mind so you don't have it. I'm going to do that. Ah, now I don't have to worry about anything else distracting me. Um, but in, in a previous um, incarnation of this podcast, we talked about a bit about how um, Thwimp uh, goes about controlling his narrative. And he does this... Um, with in, 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 di- in four different ways. And and I got this taxonomy of Trump tweets from uh, George Lakoff. Was it George Lakoff? Yeah. And um, he's awesome. Uh, he's a cognitive linguist at Cal Berkeley. Uh, and he has a podcast called Frame Lab. Um, highly recommend that you uh, check it out, check it out, check it out. Oh, I know what I'm missing. My QAnon. Uh, I was going to go into some of the crap on about QAnon. Um, hang on, hang tender. I'm going to... Um... Play you again some... Let's see. Um... I don't even know if... I can't even audition this shit. Uh... I don't want to leave you with dead air, so gonna play you a song while I go look for that um, song I want to do. I'm gonna play you the preamble to the, to the uh, Constitution, which is very important while I go find my uh, the rest of the material I wanted to use for this evening. I'll be right back in less than it takes for this to play. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. (laughs) And I'm back. I told you I'd be back before I got a chance to play. So I was just talking about the taxonomy of uh, Donald Trump's tweets. And... um, I highly recommend you checking out uh, George Lakoff's uh, works on uh, cognitive linguistics. He's got a, he uh, writes for Psychology Today, and um, I've talked about him a lot. I've referenced him a lot because he's really, really amazing and awesome, and um, I like his work. And this also goes into um, how he does this thing, and um, this is why he also advocates not amplifying uh, Trump, because you help him every time you retweet one of his comments. We amplify him every time we play one of his clips on television, on the news, be it MSNBC or CNN, let Fox do all the amplification. We don't need to spread it around. Um... It's like a weed that gets blown in the wind. And what is, these are the things that he does. First thing he does is that he, um, pre, he does preemptive fa- framing, which is uh, he, he frames the idea. He's the first to do this. Um, and you can hear it every time he says, it's a witch hunt, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he had uh, Bill Barr did some preemptive framing on the Mueller report. The next thing he does is he diverts attention. Um, ASAP Rocky was a diversion from the border bu- bullshit, you know, to di- to divert from his um, racism or an attempt to. He deflects. He attacks the messengers, and you can hear that every time he opens his yap about you know, he opens his yap. He's always attacking the messenger. He doesn't like what's being said. I mean, he's attacking Fox News because he doesn't like the fact that their that their own poll shows that he's being he's losing to uh, Biden. So he's going after the messenger, which is Fox News. Whatever happened to you? You used to be so nice, and now you're being mean to me with these polls. Yeah. Then he says a trial balloon. 
And he trial balloons in front of his adoring sycophants. With his um, two minute hates. With his stochastic, stochastic terrorism. And um, one of his trial balloons, actually, he like hinted at he might he wanted might have wanted to drop a bomb or two, a nuclear weapon bomb or two on Afghanistan. That would be awesome because then all them precious metals would be forever precious in the ground because they couldn't be mined out. That would be awesome. That's what the real issue in Afghanistan is about, precious metals. He was talking about dropping a bomber too, and he talked about ten, ten mil, killing 10 million, you know, he did, but I didn't want to kill 10 million people. See, because he would also end up killing Americans as well, you know, because if all the Americans pulled out at the same, you know. He's like that, you know? He's like that. He wants to kill people. He likes to kill people. The thing that we tend to do, which is, you know, and um, is that we continually, we progressives, never Trumpers, continually step into his frame. And we do that every time we retweet him and help him. And um, we give him free airtime. We should deny him that free advertising. 2015, 16, he didn't spend a dime on advertising because he knew how to get his ass on the news. He's not getting any, he's not going to, he's going to do, and he's going to keep doing it. Especially now that he's president. But what I like, what I think should be done if they're going to do that, is periscope everything. Because not everybody's got periscope. Easier to ignore. I'm going to throw my two cents in. Um, well, I, I did a course in political framing. Um, and I'm going to read from the takeaways. This and I refer to this list a lot. Because um, it's important because we keep doing this. We keep stepping into his frame, which puts us on the defensive. My feeling is if you're going to step into the frame, you know, step into it in such a way that you break it. In other words, if you're going to respond to him, don't fucking rephrase what he says. Don't retweet what he says. Restate it. We're capable of doing that. It's easy to restate it. We do it all we can do it all the time and that by restating what he says we can translate in other words translate what he's saying <laughs> put him on the defensive you can restate it in your response to him you don't have to retweet it with your, your you don't have to retweet him with your response for example um Oh, let me just do this. I think I can do this. This is bad. I think I'll up my Twitter. Well, no, not Twitter. I think that's the wrong account. <laughs> yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, God, now I have to go hunting for Donald Trump tweets. No, do I really have to? Let's see. Look at all the people liking that whole thing. Oh, okay, Chris Wallace was on, was, when you, if you were watching the Colbert Report the other night, Chris Wallace was on, and he was, and you can hear the reframing of uh, the Mueller, Mueller's appearance testimony before the judiciary and intelligence committees. Um, I thought he hit his stride. I thought he hit all his points. I thought the grandstanding by the Republicans was like really ridiculous. And they, time after time, attempted to make him walk into their frame by asking him to read, this is Mueller, by asking him to uh, read from the report. And Mueller recognizing that frame trap 
said, no, you can read it out loud. You can, I would rather have you read it. And by doing that, he prevented them from reframing his statements for political purposes. And of course, he was excoriated for not being, you know, for not, you know, whatever. But he did not walk into the Republican, the GOP frame regarding his uh, testimony. And we progressives were disappointed that he didn't stray from what he said he was going to stray. He, but he did repeat, strengthen the frame that FWIMP can be prosecuted once he leaves office. Thank you, Representative Buck. Thank you, uh, Mr. Buck. You bucked up on that one. You did not get the you did not get the soundbite you wanted to hear from him. You did not get nope, he can't you won't be he can't be prosecuted once he leaves office. But he can, and he will be. Which is why, you know. But that's the whole question. There are state investigations that bar consider defense attorney Barr cannot um, stop because they're state, not federal. <laughs> but on the other hand, it doesn't mean he ain't going to try. And um, so... Here's what happens when you um, step into your opponent's frame. You give free airtime to your opponent's frame, you put yourself on the defensive, and you'll probably have a heavier burden of proof than your opponent. And this is why we keep the media keeps doing this, and the Democrats keep doing this. And they need to learn, we need to learn to not do that. That's why we appear, you know. We think we're being so clever, we're not. When you and 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 again, I'm I'm reading from the notes from this um, political framing course that I took through uh, Udemy. No, um, shit, Coursera. And uh, you know, and. Um, there's two more mechanisms that can, can emerge besides the three I just read off. Your response might be complex and vulnerable. We like to talk to our constituents and to the public as though they as though they are intel like they're intelligent human beings. Well, there's a whole cadre of people who, even though they are intelligent hear the use of quote-unquote big words, college words, elite words, and think you're talking down to me. Which is why, and that is the that is the groundlings that support WIMP. They're, so they're not truly not stupid people. They just feel like when somebody talks to them like an adult above their, above a specific grade level of speech. And these could be guys that graduated college that still have a specific low level of speech. You know, might have a sixth grade education level of speech even though they managed to, even though they graduated college. They look at it as being condescended to, as being talked down to. You and your big fancy two dollar words, you know. Donald Trump talks like them. He's a rich guy, not a billionaire, but he's a rich guy who talks like them. And he talks in a very specific pattern if you listen to him. It's very flat and then it goes down. Goes down. And he repeats himself three times because that is how you do it in advertising. Repeti th if you listen to an ad, they will repeat a, th a phone number three times or repeat something three times because that's what it takes to get into your head you to remember. And also, 
And he, he is, his appeal is, appe and his rhetorical appeal is the appeal to emotion. And you know, it is an appeal to emotion. And you know that he's, he's a, um, they talk about, you know, another thing you can listen to when you listen to him. I have a hard time. There's something grating about his voice to my ears, to my central nervous system. So I have a very difficult time um, listening to him. And, um, but he uses what are called weasel words. I might do it. We'll see. Um, perhaps. I'd like to. Well, all those words means he's not going to do jack shit. Well, it means if somebody says that to you, they're not going to do what they said. Maybe I'll do it as opposed to, okay, I, as opposed to, I'll do it. There's that waffling. Well, I don't know. Am I doing my not? Uh, yeah, well, um, maybe, perhaps. It's like, when somebody couches something ugly wants to say something ugly they'll couch it in terms of what other people are saying when when my mother passed away um, I was working the Renaissance fairs out in California and, and living history stuff out in California and my mom passed away between, in the middle of the week, between a living history event that I was working at. And um, later on at another living history event, one of the people I knew, a friend of mine, walked up, came up to me and said, you know, a lot of people are saying what a hypocrite you're being about your mother's death. You couldn't stand her, and now it's all your, you know. And it stung because it was, she was saying it. It was what she was thinking, but she couldn't come right out and say it, so she had to couch it in terms of somebody else. Here in New York, I've had the same thing occur. You know, um, but it was much darker than that. It's a cute, you know. But when people want to say something nasty to somebody, they'll they'll go up to that person and say, "You know, somebody else is saying this about you," and they'll say what what it was. Somebody else is saying, you know, what it, your your boyfriend's a dickhead, and they'll say what they want to say. I mean, I say what they want to say. To this person, but say it, but put it on somebody, somebody else, so they aren't the ones that are hated on. And this is what the wimp does. Many people say, people tell me, people are saying. So essentially, she's just spreading the gossip. And we all know we are addicted to shaped reality shows because we watch them. If we didn't want if the if we didn't watch them, they wouldn't be so popular. That is the fact they're very inexpensive to produce. And um, frankly, I'm getting tired. I mean, I'm tired of the shaped reality shows. As an actor, they are deadly to my career, wannabe career. Oh, and you're listening to the. 523 happy hour here on netrootsradio.com and let's see what we got here um hi it's tom could we humbly suggest your donation to netrootsradio.com all we've got to run this 24-hour powerhouse of progressive resistance radio is what comes out of our own wallets and you. 
you are our biggest donor. And it doesn't take much, $3, $5. Just go to the bottom of our NetRootsRadio.com page and hit our Secure Donate button. Heck, you can even make a recurring contribution, and you'll get a wondiferous pair of NetRoots Radio stickers for application to your backpack, your bumper sticker, or your banjo. Well, it's up to you which backpack you want to put it on. So donate what you'd like at the bottom of our NetRootsRadio.com's homepage. Because you are our biggest donor. NetRootsRadio.com. Together, we are Resistance Radio. And, um, wow. (sighs) To continue on. Other things that he does, which causes us to walk into, you know, we can, you know... In his uh, game, the game that he plays, and he's playing a game with us. And we're playing a game with him. Everybody thinks he's playing. Oh! Oh! Speaking of game playing, um. Rashida Talib, uh, Ilan Omar out has a um, challenger. She's a Republican by the name of Danielle Stella, and um, according to Right Wing Watch, she's also in the QAnon QAnon uh, conspiracy theory camp, and. Um, a little bit of background is is that QAnon is a Trump era phenomena centered around a conspiracy theory that alleges that Trump administration insiders have been dropping clues in the form of cryptic riddles posted on anonymous image boards, um, 4chan, 8chan, about supposed secret plan to take down the deep state and a worldwide network of satanic pedophiles said to include A-list Hollywood figures and top-level Democrats. But never Republicans are always so pure and innocent. Believers who call themselves a non dedicate themselves to decoding the early the posts. And they're becoming more and more uh, frequent, visible fixtures at Trump rallies. And you can, and even you've got some law enforcement that have their Q badges, you know, emblems, things, whatever. Um, And uh, let's see. Yeah, she she's a uh, like um. And according to a um, communications volunteer uh, named Heather, uh, told Right Wing Watch that uh, via email that she wanted to make clear that Stella stands 100% behind the principles of patriotism, unity, inclusiveness, uh, where one goes, one goes all from a perfect storm, I think it is, and live for country that QAnon pronounced. And uh, she's the second Republican to endorse Q. Now, if you want to have... Um, Uh, more information on the QAnon. I'm going to re- suggest uh, you listen, you check out the uh, Travis View, who co-hosts the uh, QAnon Anonymous podcast, and which takes a critical look at the Q phenomenon. He's not a conspiracy theorist. He's a he is um, he, he they they de- deconstruct this conspiracy theory uh, group. And while I was um, no, stop that. And so while uh, I nearly had a major disaster here, and uh, uh, um, so while I was looking at QAnon and finding out how everything tied into one big conspiracy theory, 
I re re realize that what they have done. Back in the 1970s, uh, two Roberts, Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shea, wrote a trilogy called Illuminatus, wherein they took um, all the conspiracy theories of that time, of the 50s, that existed up until the 1970s, and tied them all into one grand unified conspiracy theory, tracing it all the way back to the uh, um, Adam Weishaupt and the Bavarian Illuminati. And my thinking is, is that the Q, grew, Q, the Q conspiracy grew out of that, because it is another grand unified conspiracy theory that ties all conspiracy theories into one conspiracy theory of the Illuminati controlling everything. I'm, I'm sure the uh, Legion of Dynamic Discord would be both amused and horrified at the same time. And as a Eresian Pope, I am amused and horrified at this present moment over it. Um, I highly recommend you, for if you want to understand the Q, Q con Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory, which I just read a part of it to you. Oh, oh, and, and they believe that Trump was working with Mueller to take down um, the Satanists. And you can still see how the wimp is trying to spin that. Um, now, the reason I'm bringing up Stel Daniel Stella, Danielle Stella, this, this QAnon supporter, uh, is because she was just um, charged with felony theft. Um, Danielle was arrest, has been arrested twice uh, this year in Minneapolis suburbs over allegations she shoplifted items worth more than $2,300 from a Target and goods valued at 40 bucks from a grocery store. She has, of course, denied the allegations. Because, you know. And this was... Um, Okay, the, the uh, first article that I read to you from uh, was dated July 23rd. This is dated July 25th. And um, she, um, well, of course, she, Siri, go away. See, usually I have Alexa showing. I have Alexa uh, yep. butting in. What's new, Alexa? Tell me, here's what's new. From the subway, 4, 5, 6, G, J, Z, and shuttle trains are running fine. Some 1, 2, 3, 7, A. Of course, track work on my D F M L N Q R W X Y Z. Island trains have scheduled work. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. From CBS. Alexa, stop. Yes, I was about to get my entire morning, morning, morning news fix. <laughs> Going back to uh, Danielle Stella, she said, um, "I am not guilty of these crimes in this country." I am innocent until proven guilty, and that is the law, which is true, unless, of course, you are not a person of European origins. She added, if I was guilty of crimes, I would never run for public office, putting myself in the public eye under a microscope to be attacked by all political sides. Uh, she's accused of stealing 279 items valued at $2,327.97 from a Target store in Edina, which is south um, west of Minneapolis on January 8th. Um, she was arrested for the alleged theft after a security staff called the cops. Criminal complaint filed to Hennepin County District Court alleged that Stella was seen leaving the store without paying for most of her haul after, quote, scanning only a few other items, unquote, that were valued at about 50 bucks. Oops, I just forgot to scan these things. 
The complaint said Stella told police in a statement she remembers arriving at, a, at Target to purchase items but nothing else due to post-traumatic stress disorder and that she, quote, normally goes to Target with someone because of anxiety around people. She's claiming blackout. Stella said publicly that she was the victim of a severe violent assault in 2008. She's charged with thefts under her former surname, which the Guardian agreed not to report because she said it could endanger her safety. The felony, she's charged with a felony theft because she, um, oh, the dollar amount. Oh, also she failed to show up for a court appearance. So, yes, all these uh, um, law-abiding, law-respecting uh, QAnoners and Republicans So, conspiracy theories, um, that's about all I'm going to talk about. We've got people here who um, indulge in conspiracy theories, baseless ones, and um, of course they're innocent until proven guilty. Again, unless of course your um, the, the pigmentation of your skin is not um, darker than Prince Harry's. Oh yeah, she called, um, and, and as a Pago Wiccan, I resent ha having non, non, non Wiccans being called witches. You're making a, a religious slur. And if Yelan Omar is a witch, you better beware she don't, you better make sure she's a good witch. See, when I get asked if I'm a good witch or a bad witch, I just say it depends on how angry you make me. <laughs> We're all pawns, my dear. I love it when I can't hear anything. I cannot hear my core audio stuff when I'm playing it. <laughs> uh, now we gotta like boop that. Um, the problem with conspiracy, especially with the QAnon theories, um, he's never—they've never been anything that's never been has ever been proved um, correct. And, um, for example, they will go back and find some reference to Marines so they can, in the Q drops, Q, in the Q turds, um, uh, to prove that the recent um, arrest of the Marines in California for human trafficking was predicted by, by Q. He said this would happen. They're, they were reporting on, on a young American who was held for three weeks in detention, but they're not reporting on the fact that a school child was also just picked up and detained, and a, another American citizen. The American citizens of Hispanic, Latino descent and being held as a test to see if we will complain about Americans being arrested and interred. And we have to stand up to it. I know I'm ranging all over the place, but that's me and my attention deficits. And that's why we need must stand up to the tyranny that is slowly being imposed upon us. The water is boiling, my friends. We have a choice. The choice must be made. Are we going to jump out of the boiling water before it completely boils us alive? Or are we going to add some or are we going to like add some seasoning to that broth? Thwimp 
is increasingly endorsing bad actions on the part of other governments because he wants to be able to do it. He's taking lessons. He's learning how to suppress and repress, figuring out just how far he can go before there's pushback. You mark my words, he's going to we know damn well he's going to ratchet up his two minute hates. And you have to remember, he hates women, especially smart women, smart, beautiful women in particular, because he knows. That they are the ones that will that he can never get close to. Besides, he looks you know, it's um pathetic. Really, he's pathetic. My favorite, th and my favorite thing that happened to him this week was his, was the absolute obliviousness he and everybody else on that stage were and in that, and at that Turning Point USA rally were. But they didn't notice that altered presidential seal. See, I want to know, there's someone who, who, who's stage managed and has designed sound for theater, for theatrical productions, and makeup for theatrical productions, and run lights, and then the dress rehearsals and the technical rehearsals. I am really surprised that that wasn't caught in a technical rehearsal because you know, they had to run everything up for time. And the fact that it was not observed, was not noted, means a couple of things to me. That they didn't run a tech, where if they did, they didn't run, they didn't flat, they only run, ran the video, and they didn't, and, and not put the slide, the, the, the backlight, the, the seal up. Or they did. And it wasn't really noticed because they're that clueless. But my hat is off to that Turning Point USA aide who lost their, who bravely subverted that rally. My hat is off to you, sir, or madam. It was beautiful absolutely beautiful and that particular logo was created by a former republican and uh, it's on it's like a, if you do the do a search for one term donny you can i hardly recommend that you uh, support that man cuz he's got it on t-shirts sweatshirts and totes and other stuff one term donny what you want. Just look for it. You'll find it. It's a good thing. And you're listening to the 523 Happy Hour here on NetRootsRadio.com. And um going to give us us. Net. You are listening to NetRootsRadio.com. We are Resistance Radio. I can't. 
can't hear anything from my headphones right now. Don't ask me why I can't hear a damn thing. Can't hear a damn thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It's late on a Saturday, Friday night early. On Saturday morning. Like I said, I'm recording this um, early Saturday morning or late Friday night, depending on how you look at things. Because when this actually airs, I'll be at my day job because I only work on the weekend. Woo-hoo. Anyway, um, what was I saying? I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Oh. <sighs> Oh, let's go on for another QAnonster. Here in here in New York, there was a um, dude who um, um, alleged murdered a, a a mob boss on Staten Island. Remember the Cambino family? He was Francesco, uh, you know, uh, and he was going to like arrest arrest him as part of the. Um, But he ended up shooting him in the street, shooting him down like a dog in the streets, luring him out to his car and then shooting him. And now they're claim now now Camillo now now the accused murderer is claiming that oh it was like um, he was trying to help Trump this you know by taking down this guy. So. So we got so now we got you know Trump being used in in as as a defense in, of um, cold-blooded murder. St- oh, still being used in defense of cold-blooded murder, but instead of you know like going in and shooting up a mosque or a synagogue, uh, you got or you know running down uh, people in uh, Charlottesville in your car. You got dude killing mobsters, or alleged mobsters, excuse me. So where does it end? So tell me, this is what what the fear is. This is my con. Is it going to end when somebody of note is, you know, he's ginning up the folks to take down, uh, you know, take down. Uh, you know, we do have a, you know, mob war going on, so to speak. And in this particular mob war, the dawn of dawns has to be Don, the con. Who so far, far as, um, out to John Gotti. But don't you worry, little, little Donny Squeeze Crab. Oh, Vice Admiral of the Lower Yellow Seas. You will go down like Gotti did and spend the rest of your days in prison along with your your Beavis and Butthead modeled sons. The only two members of your family I feel sorry for are Tiffany and Barron. Especially Baron, because he didn't have a choice in the matter. And fortunately, his grandparents who are raising him are freaking better influences on him than you will ever be. You lousy excuse for anything resembling a human being. I know there's dead air. You're not losing things. There's dead air because I 
I look at what is going around today and it I am distressed yet hopeful. What I would like to see is a million of us converging on DC and demand Trump renuncia Trump renuncia Danny renuncia Danny renuncia Danny renuncia Donald resign Danny resign And I think along the time we should do the same, we should also converge and demand Mitch McConnell to resign, that Paul Zoran resign, that all these motherfucking Republicans in the Senate that are sitting on their asses playing with their dicks take their dicks, their limp dicks, and go home. that all these un-American and patriotic motherfuckers go home and explain to their constituents why they're, why, what they're getting paid for. Why are they being paid for doing jack shit? The House is doing all the work. And the Senate is doing jack because Mitch McConnell is too busy sucking the sucking on Xi Jinping's cock and Vladimir Putin's cock he's taking turns he's sucking their dicks nothing gets done nothing gets done Mitch the bitch Mitch is not just Putin's Mitch but he's Xi Ping's, but he's like China's Mitch as well. He's Saudi Arabia's Mitch. He's the Philippines Mitch. He's 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 the Mitch for every tyrant in the world. But big, but he's the, but he's Trump's biggest Mitch. Rotten hell, you bastard! And now, stay tuned for Katie speaks with Clay, Katie Cal- Klobuchar here on NetRootsRadio.com, and tune in later tonight for the late night morning talk show with Kelly and Ricky here on NetRootsRadio.com, and that's at midnight Eastern. 9 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Atlantic, where we're going to discuss Hedwig and the angry itch, inch. This is going to be disaster. 